the time is finally come. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't trending this moment. It's time to learn how to paint. Well, I'm gonna learn how to think like a painter first. This exercise you're about to see me do is from Cynics's How to Learn Digital Painting for Beginners. The exercise is to take uh, a digital painting and break it down into two values, right? Two value distillations. And the goal here is to train ourselves to see shapes rather than lines and also get a good sense of composition. I'll leave a link to the video in the description for those of you curious. And I'll say this now, this exercise was very difficult. Let's see how I fared. This first one that we have here is by Minna Sundberg. So the important thing to do here is to squint your eyes so you can see the shapes as clearly as possible. Doing this helps push those details back a bit so you can really see the big picture. I really enjoyed doing this one. The shapes are very well defined and that's really the hardest thing about this exercise is choosing your shapes. With only two values, you really need to think about the composition, where the values should be grouped in with the lights or the darks. Another one here by Hospital. Shapes are really easy to see. I think it's probably a good idea to choose paintings that don't really have a lot going on. If there's too much going on, it can get a bit distracting. I really wanted to do more of uh, Zine Chin's paintings, but I felt a little bit overwhelmed. So you can see here, I'm blocking in the shadow shape on the character. You can really see just how shadows on their own can create something that's recognizable. I don't really know what those uh, shapes are on the ground, but um, I always keep in mind of the composition to make sure that it still reads well. Here's one of many Gouet's studies that you'll see me do today. I got a copy of his art book and it's, it's very inspiring to say the least. Gouet's talks about his uh, development as an artist. He talks about how he studied pharmacy and drops out to chase uh, a full-time art career and Gouet always uh, talks about the importance of fundamentals throughout the entire book which is really nice to see. You'll notice here that I'm not really um, trying to go for a one-to-one -one copy. As long as I get the idea down, um, that's a success for me. Being accurate is a whole other exercise. Cynics recommended using a hard square brush. Um, I'm not really used to it. All my edges are very uh, jagged. But other than that, I think it turned out quite well. Even though I ignored those two birds in the background. Uh, it's important to remember that um, when you're doing this exercise, that you can, you can always go back and forth between shapes. All right, there's so much decision-making to be made here. Another one here with very clear shapes. You've got the mech, uh, the mech head in the background, and you've got the sky right behind it very clearly makes a distinction between the foreground and background. So I didn't have too much trouble doing this one. I think the biggest decision that I made is uh, whether or not to group the face of the character in with the lights or the darks. And I decided to group it in with the lights. So in this one, you can see that very bright light in the background. Um, initially, I had the idea of uh, breaking that down into its own shape. But then if I did that, I would have to group the surrounding area in with the darks. And that wouldn't work because the character has to be in the darks as well. 
and I definitely don't want to lose the character in this composition. Probably wouldn't be right not doing a study of art from a different era. I had um, originally planned to do one of JC Lion Decker's pieces, but um, most of them, the ones that I found at least, they all looked like they were going to be very difficult. But I came across this one while I was on Pinterest. I think this one turned out quite well, although I may have gone a little overboard with those details. You can see here, I'm really just blocking in those highlights, and again, it really does create something that's recognisable. This is a classic Gouet's convenience store painting. Gouet's breaks down one of these uh, convenience store paintings. And again, he really makes sure the, uh, the values are, are solid before he moves on. I think the only trouble I had with this one was deciding whether or not to include that um, reflection into the lights or the darks. Even now I'm still a little bit unsure. Here's another one. I thought this would be a bit easier, but I think the end result turned out a bit messy. You can see how I'm uh, making decisions, going back and forth. Um, that's, that's part of the whole process. So here we have one by Zing Chin. I did think this turned out better than I expected. Um, even the squinting, the shapes don't really stand out to me. The painting feels quite uh, low contrast, which is probably intentional. Um, the biggest struggle I had with this was with the hand. I really had a hard time deciding uh, how to build these shapes and where they should be grouped. You can see me trying to group those fingers in with the darks, but I just feel like it didn't work. I really liked how the lights pretty much just grouped into one big shape here. I thought about grouping that five in with the lights, but I felt that it might interrupt the composition.
I really like this one. It was a lot harder than I expected. A lot of the shapes got a bit messy, but um, I think I got the uh, P-nest fairly well. You can see how I uh, chose to define the smoke in the original painting. Um, it's all soft edge. And since I'm only really working with hard edges here, um, I didn't want to just put a whole blob of smoke. I don't feel like it'd read well. I really, really love this painting. It really makes me want to go and draw owls. I think this one was mostly clear. The only uh, decision that was hard for me was uh, the owl in the bottom right corner. I was gonna group in with the darks, but I felt like that would have interrupted the shape of uh, the, um, the hobbit and the fox. Again, real clear shapes here. No real uh, tough decisions to make. Probably goes to show what uh, a great artist Gwaze is. Gwaze really does enjoy uh, darker values. Gives it a real moody feel. This will be the last one here. And uh, I thank you all for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed watching me do this exercise. Uh, hopefully you learned something from it too. The uh, next step would be to do the same exercise, but this time with three values and then with four values. So be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my digital painting journey. And as usual, my socials are in the description down below. I will see you all in the next one.